we are hesitant to talk about climate change. So when we talk about climate change, we are actually talking about three groups of people. The first group is the climate believers, who believes that the scientific evidences are true and climate is changing. We have the second group, that is the climate skeptics, who are academicians and professionals who are working in the field of climate science, but they doubt and they question the validity of the scientific evidences that climate is changing. Then we have a third group, that is climate deniers, who are academicians and professionals who do not work in the field of climate science, but who dismisses all the climate science evidences that climate is changing. With science progressing, more and more evidence is coming up, the number of climate skeptic has actually fallen. Many of them who had raised questions, who had doubts, had actually joined the group climate believers. But unfortunately, we still have a large number of climate deniers. And I'm sure today in this room as well, there will be all the three groups within, or at least you must be asking yourself to which group I belong. But irrespective of whichever group you belong, let me ask you a question. How many of you speak about climate change with your friends, family, colleagues, the way you talk about, say, poverty, unemployment, inequality, politics, etc.? And I'm sure 80% of you will say, no, we do not. Isn't it interesting? We talk about unemployment, but we are not unemployed. We talk about poverty, but we ourselves are not in poverty. Then why do we talk about it? We talk about it because we are concerned about it. We want to do something about it. We want to know more about it. But climate change, which will affect each one of us in some or other way, we feel it is not connected to us. So we don't need to talk about it. And why do we think like that? We think like that because as an individual, we feel that we are too small an entity to make any difference. Our action will have no impact in changing the climate. And so, I don't need to talk about climate change, or I don't need to do anything about climate change. But unfortunately, we do not realize that all the other seven billion who is standing next to us, or sitting next to us, also thinks exactly the same way, that I am not responsible, and I cannot make any difference, which means Almost 80% of the population of this world believes that climate change is something which is beyond my control and I should not act. Today I stand here to break this tabu and emphasize that each one of us is actually responsible for changing the climate. And so it also becomes our responsibility to mitigate it to break this taboo that we should not talk about it. How to do it? I will come back to it. But first, let's talk about what is climate change. And I'm sure you all know what is climate change. So climate change is a continuous rise in global temperature due to increase in greenhouse gas concentration over a long period of time. Say for example, 30, 40 years. Now you may again ask me if this is the first time climate is changing. Well, no, this is not the first time. Planet's climate has been changing since geological time. But those changes were natural and gradual, giving enough space to species to adapt to these changes. But the current climate change is different than the past events because it is not natural, it is human induced, and it is rapid. It doesn't give up, us enough space and time to adapt to these changes. 
and their voices are concerned. When did we begin to know that climate is changing? Very difficult to exactly pinpoint when we actually started to interfere with the atmosphere. But there is a global consensus across the scientific community that it started in the late 18th century when in the Western world, industrial revolution started. Because that was a time when human society started to depend extensively on fossil fuel. There were higher economic growth, prosperity, high standard of living, which eventually led to more and more depletion of fossil fuel. And towards the end of 20th century, we also started to raise the temperature. Was there no alarms raised? There was a lot raised. It was as early as 1896 when a Swedish scientist, Savante Arrhenius, put forth his theory that continuous burning of fossil fuel would increase global temperature and also add CO2 into the atmosphere. Of course, science was weak at the time, and the scientific community dismissed this theory. Particularly, economists could not accept this theory of Arrhenius because economists believe that there can be no limits to growth. And if we accept what Arrhenius is talking about, it means that climate change will not let the economy grow forever. So we did not accept the theory, we dismissed it, and we went ahead with a growing economy. In 1950s and 1960s, again, the scientists came up, and this time with much more evidences because science became stronger. And in fact, we also spoke about that how every year temperature is rising because of more and more emission of CO2 into the atmosphere. Did we agree at the time? No, we did not. There was a hesitation to accept it again. Why there was a hesitation? Why we felt that denial is the best defense mechanism? Because if we accept that climate is changing, it means that we have to change the way we are producing, we have to change the way we are consuming. That means we are asking for behavioral change, and that is a big choice. It took almost four decades when in 1992, in Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, 100 heads of states of different countries across the world for the first time met to talk about environmental sustainability. One of the greatest achievements of this summit is coming up of United Nations Framework for Climate Change, UNFCC in short. UNFCC helped the developed world responsible for creating climate change, and so they need to take a larger binding responsibility, or I would say legal binding, to reduce the emission, which means they now need to move from a fossil fuel-led economy to a cleaner and greener economy. And what about developing countries? Developing countries have no legal binding because they have only started to develop so they were given the time and the space to develop and voluntarily make efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So what did country like India do? Countries like India took a path which is called co-benefit approach, where the goal continues to be development, but when we are moving in the path of development, we will also try to achieve climate gains. Now this is all that was happening at the international level. Let us now talk about what was happening within the country, within India, how common people were looking at climate change. Because there was a distinction made between the developed and developing countries in terms of responsibility, common people like you and I, we felt that climate change is an elite subject. 
It is the rich who are responsible for it, and so it is the rich who needs to do something about it. Poor country like us have too much on our plate to talk about climate change. So denial started from there itself. Skepticism started from there itself. Media hardly covered anything on climate change. Public spaces did not talk about climate change. And also, political manifestos never spoke about climate change. Neither we asked our politicians and decision makers, what are you going to do about this problem? People like us who work in the field of climate change, who tries to understand how climate change is going to have an impact on the economy or on the society at large, are also unfortunately looked up as elite researchers because we are not working on pressing issues like poverty, inequality, unemployment. And it is also a fault on us that we felt more comfortable to remain confined within our community and we didn't speak much about it in public spaces too. We only spoke with people who believed that climate is changing. But today, because I have this opportunity, I want to speak to each one of you and tell you that whether we like it or we do not like it, developing countries like India are most vulnerable to climate change. Why is that? Because poor people about whom we are concerned are the one whose livelihood depends on water, forest, land, etc. For example, agriculture, where a large section of our community depends, is one of the most climate sensitive sectors. Climate will change the rainfall pattern. And most of our agriculture, as you know, depends on rain-fed agriculture. So who will suffer the most? So when I am trying to understand the impact of climate change on these poor farmers, due to change in rainfall pattern, how can it be an elite subject? Frequent floods, frequent droughts, who suffers the most? When there is flood, those marginalized community who lives in the floodplain area are the one who suffers the most. So when I'm trying to research and try and understand how climate change is going to increase the occurrence of floods, I'm basically trying to understand a poor household which used to face floods only once a year, now will face flood thrice a year. How can it be elite subject? Because will that not make those poor families more vulnerable? I started to speak about this whole climate change issue by stating one important thing in the very beginning, that each one of us feel that we are not responsible because our action doesn't make any difference. What we tend to forget here? We tend to forget here that what we demand is what is produced. If I am demanding energy intensive products, it means that I am asking the companies to burn more and more fossil fuel to meet my demand. And that means I'm also adding more CO2 into the atmosphere. If I curb my demand, if I do not demand highly energy intensive products, or if I save energy, I'm actually indirectly reducing the emission of CO2 because companies will also reduce burning fossil fuel. But for us to understand all of these and believe that we can make a difference, the first thing is we have to change our attitude towards climate change. We have to break the climate fear taboo. And how can we do that? The first thing is we need to be passionate about the subject. The way we are passionate about poverty, unemployment, politics, caste, we need to be equally passionate about climate change. You can be climate skeptic. Climate skeptic helps us to improve science. But do not be climate denier because you are dismissing the science. Once you start 
Understanding what climate change is, we will start talking about it. Because many of us do not want to talk about climate change is because we are not confident about the subject. We are not aware about it. So once we start talking about it with our friends, families, colleagues, it would spread in public spaces. There will be more awareness. And eventually, we will also see educational institutions are now, who do not even consider climate change to be a subject to be taught, would start teaching climate change as a core discipline, core subject. And at different levels, primary, secondary, tertiary, and it is important, very, very important. It is important because studies actually have found that countries like India, the level of awareness is very low. There was a recent study which was conducted and published in a journal called Nature Climate Science. It interestingly found that only 35% of Indians are actually aware and concerned about climate change. Which also means that 65%, we can change this figure a bit because this is a 2015 study, but when 60% of Indians are not concerned, not aware, and I see this itself is a big threat. So once the educational institutions are talking about it, teaching about it, obviously the awareness level will go up. And the last important point to understand is you cannot de-link climate change from other development issues. You cannot talk about water, sec water security without talking about climate change. You cannot talk about food security without talking about climate change. They are so interlinked. So it is extremely important that we insist or our research make sure that we have a climate lens to whatever we are talking about. We must also ask our decision makers and policy makers to plan things, keeping in mind that climate is going to change. If all of these happens, and I am hopeful that this will happen, then I think it would also change the way we think. It will change the way we think that I cannot make the difference. It will instead say that I, or my choice, or my demand can actually make a difference. If I speak about it, that I can make a difference, all of those who are standing next to me, or who are sitting next to me, will also start thinking in the same way. And if all of us start thinking about it in the same way, then we can say, together, we can make a difference. <laughs>